So what exactly does it take to make a career as a freelance stage manager in regional theater? My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Good evening, friends. This is your Half Hour Call, please. Half Hour. Thank you. What is up, my friends? Today, I was able to sit down with Ruth E. Kramer and talk to her about her long career as a regional theater freelance stage manager and exactly what has made it so successful. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video where Ruth will share her top tips for working at a brand new regional theater for the first time. But if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Kent and you are watching Half Hour Call where we're dedicated to shining the spotlight on technical theater. So if you want how-to videos, interviews with industry leaders like you're watching right now, and insider theater updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video. Video. That's enough for me. Let's dive into that interview. Well, hi, Ruth. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to get to talk to you about stage management in a, in a full length interview. You've been a series regular for a while, but I'm excited to get to actually talk to you at, at length about things. Thanks, Kent. It's great to be here today. Awesome. So you live in New York, but um, from what I've gathered, you rarely work in New York. You kind of travel all over. Um, how did you discover stage management and when did you know that this was what you wanted to do? Do I know what it's I want to do now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be an actor so badly. So I went to college because I wanted to be an actor. And my parents were very indulgent going, that's not going to happen, but do what you need to do. And after my sophomore year, I realized that I wasn't any good at that. And my best friend in college who was a grad student when I was an undergrad said, Ruth, why don't you be a stage manager? And I was like, well, what is that really? Because when we worked shows and we were on crew pushing scenery or taking sound cues or light cues, we did it ourselves. We just knew what the cues were and we did them. There wasn't really a stage manager. So in my junior and senior years of college, the university brought in, in each of those years, a grad student stage manager who took us, a group of about six people who seemed to incline towards stage management, and took us under their wings. And in the, on the main stage shows, we got to be their assistants. And in the arena, the smaller theater, we got to stage manage ourselves, which is when and where and how I decided this was for me. Uh, once I got into it, it seemed to me like a natural fit. It seems to be the, everyone kind of stumbles into it and they're like, ah, I'm here. That seems to be the theme. Every time I ask this question, that seems to be the theme, which is really nice. Right, I mean, we didn't have classes in stage management, so it was not something I knew about. Whereas now people can intentionally go into stage management. Right. Um, I've never taken a single class. And I'd love to. I'd love to start auditing classes at all kinds of universities in stage management. I think that would be just so exciting and so interesting at this point in my life. Well, so from from your college experience and being mentored by the MFA or the master's students, how did, where did that take you? What's your career been like so far? Well, very quickly, because that was a long time ago and there's a lot of career there. That took me to summer stock. I did non-equity summer stock in Michigan, where I am from, in the summers of my junior and senior years in college. And that summer stock was populated by almost everyone was from New York. And once I'd done a second summer of that, it was, I'm moving to New York. And I spent, I spent about nine months working in Michigan in other non-equity theaters. And then I just, I sold my car and left and moved to New York. And I had a friend who said, you can sleep on my fold out couch for one month. And in that one month period after that, you have to have a job and your own place to live. And I did. And that's the way it worked. So I, I first started off doing showcases, free theater at night with the people I had met doing summer stock in college. And after my first year and a half where I worked a day job during the day, I mean, we're talking the late 70s. So my day job during the day was as an answering service operator. It was right before answering machines came into vogue, right before, uh, right when call forwarding started and people would forward their calls to the answering service and we would answer the phones and take messages and doing free theater at night. 
And then I saw an ad for an ASM to tour with a dance company. And I toured with Palabolus Dance Theater, Modern Dance Company, for three years. After my first year and a half in New York, still doing non-equity summer stock over the summers. And after three years of that, I was like, I want to go back to theater. I don't want to do dance for my entire career. I need to get back to theater. And I stayed home and eventually was offered my equity card by someone who I had done free theater at night with who were producing their own show and hired me. So that was the equity card start. And I did many, many smaller letter of agreement and small professional theater shows at the beginning of that. And then I got hooked into TYA and I did TYA touring for many, many years. And again, we're talking in the time before either floor mics or body mics. We're talking reel to reel tape decks, me with a splicing kit and splicing tape, doing a musical review and re splicing the tape together whenever they change the order of songs. Um, I toured with TYA for quite a while, after which I really wanted to stop touring and I started remounting the shows when the original directors couldn't do it anymore. So I directed 13 shows and did some in-town work for them and then started doing regional theater. I got lucky and started getting hired at regional theaters, which paid well in the scheme of things back then, paid well. And it just took off from there that I became what I think of as a regional theater stage manager and what I'd like to change my head and everybody's head is just go, we're stage managers. I mean, Maddie mm -hmm. DiCarlo has talked about this. Why are we saying Broadway stage managers or off-Broadway or regional? We're just all stage managers. But the bulk of my career has been in the regions and I'm fine with that and I'm fine with saying that. What's your favorite part of that, of that entire experience working at, you know, Lord Theatres or, or SPTs or all of that? My favorite part of being freelance and moving around from theater to theater is the variety. I love the variety. I love not being in one place for too long. And I love returning to places I've been before. And I've thrived on the schedule of working eight, nine or 10 weeks, then coming home for a month or two months or two weeks or one week, and then going off to do another job. Again, seven, eight, nine weeks, and then coming home and being able to just whoosh, no demands on me for four weeks or six weeks, and then off again. I love the variety of that life. I will admit that there was a time in my life when I did a, what I call a perma temp job. It was through a temp agency, but I worked for one company for many, many months. and. The Ruth of that time liked the regularity of that. I liked working from 9 until 5 or 5.30 every weekday and knowing my evenings were free and my weekends were free. So I'm flexible with both variety and with regularity, Kent. It just depends what I'm doing at the time. As you're kind of moving about, uh, I'm obviously thinking about it right now because I've been packing up. Do you have any advice for what you've discovered you absolutely need to bring, what you absolutely don't need to bring, um, depending on the length of the contract, what if you get something that starts and you have to go straight to the next gig, all of that fun stuff. I've done that. Um, I have done the thing where it starts and I have to go right to my next gig and they're in completely different climates or seasons. <laughs> yeah, um, without coming home. And uh, so I'm an overpacker. Just so you know, I'm a girl overpacker, and I believe if I'm somewhere for seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, I want with me what I want with me. Period. End of discussion. Uh, I'm not minimizing just because I'm going away. I have always shipped ahead. You know, Lord Theaters are required to reimburse you for X amount of shipping. So I've always done that. So I can take one suitcase, 50 pounds or under, on the plane with me and to carry on. Um, I've become really good at doing that. And I became at one point really good at packing the next set of boxes and shipping them ahead two months to a theater and getting the theater to store them for me 
when I was going from the South to a winter in the Midwest. I pack ahead of time. I have a friend who coined the phrase procrastinating, meaning <laughs> they procrastinate their packing, whether going to a gig or leaving a gig, that they do it at the last minute. And I stole that from them and coined the phrase anticipating. I'm Which is really, the opposite? <laughs> it's the opposite. I'm really good at putting a box together, opening it up, putting it on a chair in my apartment, and having it pack itself. Which actually means as I pass it, I dump things into it that I want to go that I'm not going to need for the next week or two weeks, depending how long it is until I need. So my advice to people is take advantage of what's in your contract. Uh, if there is anything in your contract about reimbursing you for shipping and take what you need and then evaluate what you really need and what you want. And if it's something that you think you need, take it. I, there would be other people who advise you to go to theater jobs that are not tours. I'm not talking about touring. There would be other people who advise you to pack light. I advise you to do whatever the heck you want. So you've worked at so many different theaters and, and like you were saying, making these connections all over the country. How do you, what do you think has allowed you to kind of make these connections in places that you've never been? I have gotten jobs simply from resumes. And I don't know if those connections came because of references or not. I mean, no one has ever gotten in touch with me and said, someone just called me for your references. That's never happened. I've never had someone on my resume say, by the way, this place got in touch with me today. So I always wonder if people actually do call for your references or not. I don't know. Um, some of it is my resume. Some of it is my experience. Most of it is through someone I know who knows someone I know who knows someone I know. That kind of chain where um, your name has reverberated and they go, oh, this is the time maybe I should hire that person. Uh, that has happened that way with people I've met and people I've never met. But I don't ascribe a career ever to any one thing. It's your diligence, it's your resume, it's your cover letter, it's your network, it's luck sometimes. Um, if you get to actually meet people, and this is a theme that resonates with me through almost every question you and I could talk about. It's making relationships. It's making relationships, genuine relationships, not just, I want to have a drink with you because I want a job, but I want to have a drink with you because maybe I want a job and then you sort of become colleagues and friends. Uh, I think the making of relationships is very important in so many of the things we talk about as stage managements, stage managers, not just to advantage us in hiring, but for solace in life. Um, so when you're going to a, a new theater for the first time, what is kind of your approach to assimilating to the working culture, finding out what the quirks of that specific theater are, working with building those relationships that we were talking about with yeah. the people that you'll be working with? Yeah. Um, a good, good conversation with the production manager before arriving is great. You can find out what the expectations are of you and of other people. Uh, so a real thorough conversation and a list of questions that you have that you start at the beginning of your career and just keep adding to at every situation going, whoa, I should have asked this question before I went. Not to decide whether or not I'm going to take the job, but to have some information. So knowing what's important to you and what's important to an institution and being able to ask those questions ahead of time. Like, for example, paperwork. Do I need to use your templates or is there flexibility in adjusting to what I might bring to the table? But my biggest answer to that question is take a day of pre-production and make relationships. Walk around that theater, sit down in the marketing office, talk to that person, sit down in the development office, talk to that person, talk to the education person, go to the scene shop, actually see them in their environment, talk to the props person in their own environment, make relationships. And if you extend the hand of relationships, I, I think one's um, 
professional collegial relationship with your coworkers in the new place is going to be better because you've reached out, you've made the first move to getting to know who they are and then what they need from you. Um, I've always found that taking a day, whether it's one day or whether it's a couple of hours in four days or four hours in two days, to just talk to people is, is so important. And it's, the paperwork can wait a moment and talk to, talk to people. It's important that we as stage managers have people want to follow our lead. You know, uh, metaphorically take off those shoes and walk the hot coals for us if we ask because we trust them and they know we've walked them first and mm -hmm. that it's okay. And uh, it, it has taken me time in my career to get to be that. Which is why I try to, uh, when I talk to younger stage managers or students, to say, don't fall into the trap I felt in early in my career, thinking I was the boss. Think of yourself as a leader, and it actually does something chemical in your body. Those two things are entirely different in my body when I think of myself as one or as the other. Do you have any other advice for the stage managers of the future, stage managers of tomorrow, stage managers of today? All of us. Um, <laughs> Another metaphor I use endlessly, but I'm sorry I'll use it, is the smorgasbord. In your career as a stage manager, you see many different behaviors and choices of other stage managers. Now granted, we don't work together a lot because there's maybe one, two, or if you're lucky, three stage managers on a show. But we do social media, we, we connect on the internet, and you hear about the choices other stage managers make and how they do things. And it's a buffet, it's a smorgasbord laid out in front of you of choices. And what I say to students who are coming out of school is you've been given a small buffet. Your buffet is now going to start to get larger and you're going to realize what you've been taught is a great background, a solid background for you to lean in. But then there are gonna be other things added. You're gonna get some peas over there and some cheese over there and maybe some ice cream over there. And you do get to pick other things from that smorgasbord than you were taught. And I and you get to pick other tools from that smorgasbord with every show we do. In fact, with every day we go into rehearsal or performance, we get to make those choices. Whether that choice is about paperwork, or about working with your team, or about relating to an actor or a director, or having an urge to say something in rehearsal and then going, I think I'm going to choose silence right now and see how that works for me in this moment. We're constantly picking from a whole long um, buffet of choices. And I think it's important for everyone to know you can add to that buffet throughout your entire career. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much for talking to us all about um, your experience with regional theaters and so much more than we planned on, but I loved it so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Kent, and this has been your Half Hour Call. Find the perfect gift for the stage manager in your life at the Half Hour Call store. Now with free shipping on all domestic orders. New products added frequently. Visit KentJamesCollins.com store to shop now.